Now, it has been a while since I last covered Inverse Finance and its stablecoin dollar. I have a couple of videos on the channel where I go through the rundown of what the protocol is and what the stablecoin is about, how it's managed overall. And it's deployed on several DeFi protocols, so people can take advantage of that as well. But they are releasing a new product coming in in about a week. And I have been aware, uh, made aware of this, all right? So I'm covering this today. Now, that new product is called S Dollar. Now, there is actually a PDF that goes through all the details or the ins and outs of what S Dollar is. But I'm going to save you the trouble of all the technical mumbo jumbo, even though I'm going to leave a link to this in the description below if you want to check it out. But I have read all of this and I'll give you the quick rundown. It's not something out of the blue, it's not something that hasn't been invented yet. So there are competitors out there, but they do have their unique selling point. So this is the basic rundown. First of all, just to reiterate here, dollar comes from the main fixed interest market that inverse runs, all right? It's called firm for short. So you deposit collateral, you earn on that collateral, you can mint dollar. Unfortunately, right now, all of the dollar is depleted. There aren't enough dollar for you to take anyways if you deposit collateral. So the only way to acquire dollar is through the open market, so through the LPs on a, across all chains, all right? That's all. Now, this is something that I have also mentioned once, that that's a limitation in terms of the supply that can be produced. I think overall, it's better to get the supply from depositing collateral, but unfortunately they are only live on the Ethereum network and Ethereum is expensive. So I'm sure if they expand a bit more, let's say on Arbitrum, and they have more supply, people will actually use that instead of buying it and selling it on the LPs, because once, you know, it goes to, to the open market, you know, there's a high chance that in, it won't reach a dollar. And it has been struggling a bit to maintain that 0 0.99 a dollar, so 99 cents. But overall, you get that dollar and then you use it on different protocols. Now, S dollar gives you value capture for that dollar that you get. Because, simply put, that dollar will enter an ERC4626 standard, so it's a vault contract where you deposit your dollar and you take that receipt token called S dollar. Now, whilst in the vault, you are accruing an APY that is coming from revenues derived from the firm itself. Because remember, the firm produces borrowed interest. So interest coming in from people who borrow money, from people who mint that dollar. So basically, overall, and that is in the shape of their new token called DBR. If you recall, we have spoken about DBR. We actually explain what this is about. It's dollar borrowing rights. So it gives you the right, you know, to have that dollar without paying interest because you already bought the token. So there is actually something there. There is an auction where people, you know, get that DBR, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of technical stuff around it. But overall, the idea is that while your dollar is in that ERC4626 volt, you are accruing APY, so your dollar is increasing because the ratio dollar to S dollar is ever changing to the upside. So the S dollar that you have today will have more value in dollar tomorrow, very simply put. Sorry to interrupt you there, folks. I just want to quickly chime in and mention that we are currently working on a project called the Miracle. It's DeFi as a service, meaning you'll get exposed to real DeFi protocols that generate real revenue, AKA real yield. And you're gonna get a cut of this without doing the setup yourself. All you have to do is enter, claim, or withdraw. Very simple. So your capital is available at all times to take, and you can choose the option where to invest. More details in the description and in our community chat. Now, here's the thing. Like I said, S dollar is not something that doesn't exist out there at all. So it's not something that nobody has invented so far and they do have competition, but the competition is centralized. All right. So Frax has their version. It's called S Frax. DAI has their version as DAI, but S DAI and S Frax derives their yield from government bonds. So there is a centralized, you know, option there that these uh, receipt tokens derive value from. However, as dollar doesn't, as dollar takes value from the firm, which is a decentralized lending market. So there is this, you know, nuance in terms of which is best 
from the source of the revenues now of course the other source is fixed this one is more or less volatile even though the interest is fixed but there has to be people who are borrowing i mean these people have to take these funds in order to pay those interest uh in order to pay those interest expenses at the end of the day and the apy of s dollar so the dollar that is in the vault will vary all right so again if there's more demand for dollar and there's more supply meaning people will actually go and deposit collateral and mint it but the issue right now is that dollar because it's below peg there's no supply being issued on the firm market if dollar goes slightly above peg then more supply will be minted and hopefully as dollar will bring more demand for dollar so people will buy it up you know uh, on the open market the price will rise and then more supply will flood the market so people will take that supply deposit in so on and so forth now this is something or this is a part of the speculative you know portion of the video from my end because this could help dollar actually getting pushed back to its peg however the thing is why would people put their dollar into that vault you know lock it up instead of using it and earn attractive apys and aprs across DeFi protocols why would i take the receipt token and leave dollar in if the apy is not attractive i mean we don't know how much it will be yet we don't know it's it all it's all about supply and demand at the end of the day but but what if it's not at the same caliber as what you would get let's say on velodrome aerodrome so on and so forth and here's the cool part and here's something that they didn't disclose but that's something that i think makes sense going forward what if you know a new value captured flywheel is introduced what if instead of having dollar being used on DeFi protocols now you have s dollar that is used there and that's the cool part because now you are minting your dollar all right or you're buying your dollar from the market price should stabilize a bit higher that dollar is put in that vault now you get the receipt token you're earning more money because of that receipt token and then on top of this you take that receipt token and then you use it in DeFi protocol so instead of having dollar out there now you have s dollar out there and you're earning it's a yield bearing asset on top of the yield bearing asset that it already is earning you uh, more uh, yield in DeFi protocol so i think i think this is the optimal flywheel that hopefully inverse is aiming towards but we'll see of course it's gonna take time of course it's a long way ahead because that's not something simple it's not something straightforward to do just to change up everything all markets across all DeFi protocols it's a long road but it's interesting to me all right that maybe this is where they're going because at the end of the day what is the goal of every stablecoin issuer is to increase the supply of their stablecoin because when people see that more people are interested in this so there's more to it on the market then that's marketing by itself and right now it does like if you look at the firm you don't see the full picture because the TVL itself, even though it's slower than the supply, now you might say, okay, obviously it's below peg. But then again, the supply here, it's all the supply across all chains. It's not just the supply derived from the firm. So if you just take the firm's supply compared to the firm TVL, it's way below that 46.02 million. So there's also more money in these LPs that technically quote unquote back up the price, but I don't think it's in par. It's it might be overall if you add the funds up across all chains, but it's slightly below. So S dollar could be the answer to actually you know bring more value to the protocol. And I think honestly that inverse should branch out to more chains, more cheaper chains, L2s you know have more markets bring more options to the table because competition is rising into the lending market space so there's a lot of competitors now granted not many competitors are within the niche of depositing collateral and minting an asset so there's metronome for example that is also live on ethereum and optimism so they went on optimism because of that issue so hopefully inverse will do the same and i think with that i'm just gonna say that if you're not part of our community 
check us out all right link will be in the description below it's such a cool room you won't regret joining and with that see you on the next one have a good one